We're joined now by 2019 Captain's shortstop and Indians number two prospect Tyler Freeman, who has just been named to the Indians taxi squad for this truncated 2020 Major League season. Tyler, first of all, how are you doing and uh, how did it feel to learn that you'd be part of this taxi squad that's getting to, to be basically a, a half a step away from the big leagues? Yeah, thanks, Andrew. Thank you guys for having me on. Um, you know, I'm doing better now that I actually get to, you know, do some baseball stuff, you know, staying at home, not, not getting any baseball action other than like working out and doing stuff on my own. But, uh, you know, it's exciting. It was exciting news when I got the call and stuff and I'm super happy. You're in Texas now and traveling out to Cleveland shortly, expected to be training at Classic Park at the Captain's Ballpark, the Indians official alternate training site, which makes sense about 20 minutes down the road from Progressive Field. What do you know about what that training environment's going to look like for you? So all, all I know right now is that we're going to be working out, doing some inner squad stuff, doing doing all we can, doing ground ball work, hitting hitting on the field, just kind of slow start once we first get there and then ramp things up. Um, that's all I know for now. Uh, and hopefully here in the future, they'll let us know what we're going to be doing more of. So Now you're living down in Texas with – former captain Jonathan Engelman, and not a former captain, but an Indians uh, outfield prospect, Stephen Kwan. You guys have had a nice little setup down there and the ability to train together. And just talking to John literally last week, he was saying about your, your training schedule that, first of all, you were getting after it every day and you had uh, four or five days of weightlifting followed by what was supposed to be basically – like a game-like environment on a Friday. So you're doing game-like training and weightlifting during the week. And then at the end of the week, you test yourself in a, a game-like or as close to a game-like atmosphere as you can. How do you feel you've improved doing that? What areas of your game do you feel like uh, have gotten the most improvement from that training, from that training right. method? Right. So, you know, I, I, me, us three guys, you know, we took a, we took a vow and said, hey, we're not going to skip a beat and we're going to keep working out. We're going to keep doing our stuff. And we seriously have not taken a day off. It's, it's weightlifting, you know, every Friday, like John was saying, we're doing some live ABs. We're taking live reps, like from, from infield, from outfield. Um, you know, we're doing the most that we can. And, you know, we have drastically improved, you know, I'm learning off John, John's learning off me. I'm learning, learning off Steven, learning off John, vice versa and stuff. And, you know, we, we, like I said, we haven't skipped a beat and we feel like we've gotten a lot better through this quarantine time, which, you know, is, it's been a blessing in disguise. And, you know, thanks to guys like our, our guy, our trainer, Rocky, um, opening up his facility to let us work out there. One of our other guys, uh, Dustin, who's helping us, throwing us BP when, when he can every single day. I don't know how his arm hasn't fell off, but uh He's, um, he's doing all he can for us. And we just have so many resources out here. It's unbelievable. And we're super blessed. So you've obviously been staying in shape, staying baseball ready. What was it like when you found out the moment that you're going to be on the Indians taxi squad? And then um, really, how do you think that, or I guess um, you're going to be on the short list of people that can potentially help the big league club this year. What's that got to be like inside your head? It's still a, a lot to process at this moment. I'm super excited, like I said. Um, but, you know, the training aspect of that is, you know, it, it's kind of, you know, we didn't skip a beat. And, I mean, we're ready. We're, we're ready for the challenge that's being ahead of us. And, you know, like I said, we're ready to get going. So, You mentioned all the resources you had down there. And I do want to deviate from baseball for a second just to lean into the, the safety aspect of things here because, obviously, that's also a concern not only with – where everybody is in their their own little uh, bubble with you guys in Texas or with uh, other guys who are training across the country and, and in other parts of the world, right? But with the restart of baseball in, in Major League Baseball, there are a lot of protocols uh, and a lot of a lot of things that Major League Baseball and the teams are doing to be safe. So I, I'm just curious, given that you guys had a lot of stuff open to you in Texas, what were you doing to be safe and, and what sort of concerns did you have? Absolutely. Yeah. Obviously there were many concerns. Uh, first, as soon as we got sent home, we were, we were trying to figure out ways, how can we stay as safe as possible? And, you know, the biggest thing was, like I said, our resources, they made sure we were safe. You know, the place we were hitting at, he would open it us. He would open it up just, just for us in the morning. Like it was just us 
and he's wiping down, he's doing, he's, he's wiping down everything possible in there, making sure we stay clean. Same with Rocky. When we're weightlifting, we make sure we wash, wash everything. Even if we touch a little bit of anything, we're wiping down. There's, there's wipes everywhere. We have to wear masks while we work out, you know, and for, for a while we had to wear gloves and stuff. And, uh, you know, that was, that was our biggest priority. We have to stay safe, but also trying to get as much work as we can. How much was that in the back of your mind when you got into stuff that was more game activity like? Was it weird at all to be in this space where you're you're trying to play baseball and and act as normal as you possibly can, but still understanding that, hey, you know, I'm I'm supposed to be six feet from a person and and I'm not right now because I'm trying to play ball. Right. You know, we just viewed it as another challenge, you know. How can we possibly get better? You can always get better no matter what is in front of you, good or bad. But, you know, we just – we tried to improve as much as we can. And we knew there was going to be bumps in the roads. And we did – like I said, we did all we can to, to go around that. And uh, for the most part, I think we did. And uh, like I said, staying as safe as possible, which is what we did. And, uh, you know, just kept going forward from there. Well, we talked about your training and all you guys did in Texas. When I talked to John, he was saying that you guys, again, would challenge yourselves on Friday and see how you progressed over the course of the week from your, uh, your training into the game-like situation. And that's kind of how you gauged your progress. It's a small sample size to gauge your, your progress. One, one game a week after a week's worth of training. What are you most looking forward to when you get into something closer to a professional game environment? at this alternate training site as part of the taxi squad to test what, uh, what you've been doing this whole time. Right. And so every Friday when we, when we would take live ABs and stuff, we really viewed it as a, as a game like environment. I mean, we were facing guys like Jake Arietta. We were facing guys, Zach Britton, um, Nick Vincent, um, Corey Knable, uh, and a relief pitcher, Nick, Nick Ramirez from the Tigers. We were facing some pretty good dudes and you know, taking that into the taxi squad. It's like, Hey, you know, I can, I can hang in there. It's, it's like, I, you know, everyone's, everyone's, you know, they're, they're human. Everyone has a human element and playing against like some, or getting quality at bats against big leaguers like that. It's like, Hey, you know, taxi squad is going to be fun. It's also going to be a challenge, but uh, you know, we can hang in there. So. You got any big time results that you're willing to share off some of those guys? I, man, I don't know if I can say it on here. But, you know, <laughs> you're not going to show uh, anybody up, huh? Yeah, no, okay. I, can't, I can't do that. But, <laughs> that's you know, okay. We did well. That's all I'm going to say. We, we held our own, and uh, there may have been some home runs hit. I don't know. I'm just going to say it. But. <laughs> By you? You famously with the line drive swing? Exactly. Hey, I'm telling you, Rocky knows his workout stuff. He's been putting some weight on me. He's, I'm telling you, he, he, he knows his stuff. But, uh, yeah, it, it was, it, it's been fun. Been actually seeing a lot of results, honestly, from that side, too. So I'm excited to put it all together. What is the single nastiest pitch you saw from a big leaguer you faced during this time? Oh, okay. Uh, Zach Britton's sinker, that one. And then we also got Cork and Abel's curveball. Discussed. What was so like, what was so tough about those pitches? So Zach Britton, it's, it's not a normal sinker. It's like, so he throws a sinker from the left side. The ball starts say middle in and goes away for a ball low and away. And it speeds up as it breaks, if that makes sense. So you got the sinker. It's it, as soon as it's breaking, it's going in faster. It's like, I've never seen that before. And then Corey Knable's curveball is like starts at your the top of your head and ends down the middle for a strike. And we're like, well, how do you hit that? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> You're facing those pitches. Obviously, you get the opportunity to have more reps against those individual pitches than you normally would. What kind of adjustments were you able to make once you had seen it a couple times? What was your approach like against – Britain and Canable, especially with those pitches that you found so challenging. Right. Seeing them for the first time, you know, it gets you to like jerk a little bit. Plus no, I mean, you know, they're big leaguers, you know what they got, but there's no real scouting report on them because they're going through their stuff. So it's like, you see him a couple times. You're like, okay, I know what he's got now. You got to make adjustments. You know, it's, this isn't a normal curveball I've seen before, or not a normal sinker I've seen. So you just, you pick and choose you, you process of elimination on pitches and stuff still viewing it as like game at bats. And then, you know, you go to work from there. Tyler, a couple more for you. And again, we're with uh, Tyler Freeman, 2019 captain shortstop and Indians number two prospect, who's going to be part of the, the Indians taxi squad working out at classic park. I am, uh, I'm curious, what are your expectations in terms of 
not just what the training is going to look like at, at the ballpark, but did they give you any sort of indication as to where you might be on the pecking order for a major league road trip or, or being a major league call up, um, whether that's uh, on a fill in basis or, or to fill in for injury, whatever the case may be. You know, I, I've got no word on that seriously. Um, but, uh, you know, I, like I said, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Super blessed to be here. And, you know, if, if, uh, my name gets called, I'll, I'll be ready for sure. Um, it's an exciting time in my life. We, we have no idea what to expect because this has never happened before, but a super exciting time. And uh, like I said, I'm super blessed to be here. And last one for you, what's your, your big takeaway that you're, you're hoping to take away from this experience, the combination of your having all of this time to train that you normally wouldn't have, the extended off season with those guys, Stephen and John, and – coupled with what you're getting the opportunity to do now to have kind of a closed environment, almost like a major league type atmosphere with the taxi squad. Right. Just like I, John and Quan were here, I'm just going to soak everything in that I can, you know, I'm, I'm going to soak all the things I learned from Johnny and Quan, apply that to going forward here and then learn some more with the big league guys. You know, I'm going to be asking questions, going to be asking stuff. How do I get better? What can I do to help you guys win a championship in the future? You know, and that, like I said, it's the biggest thing. Um, I don't, we, we want for, for Cleveland, like I said, we want a championship uh, banner here in a progressive field. But, uh, you know, I'm going to keep, keep doing my thing, keep learning, like I said, and, you know, hopefully I can do what I can to help the big league club win. Tyler, it's always such a pleasure to talk to you. Best of luck. Congratulations. Really happy for you and stay safe. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me on. Seriously. Yeah, thanks, Tyler. Thank thanks, Tyler. All right.